Hello guys, welcome to Jhook and in today's session we are going to look on setting up Kubernetes dashboard on a Google Cloud platform. In the previous tutorial we have seen how to set up a Kubernetes dashboard on a local Kubernetes cluster which is running on your laptop or your on desktop which is your development machine. But this time we are going to try out the actual Kubernetes dashboard access on a Google Cloud platform. So for that uh, you can refer to this guide. Uh, I'll post the link into the description section so you can follow the same steps which, I've, which I'm going to perform in this session. So in this guide you will see three options. Uh, one is for Minikube, one is for Kubernetes local cluster and third one is for Google Kubernetes engine on Google platform. So just click on this link and in the step number one we need to create a cluster. So head over to Google Cloud Platform. As you can see on the right hand side, this is my Google Cloud Platform console or dashboard. And if you're new to the Google Cloud, Cloud Platform, then you can pretty much use their $300 free credit, uh, which they provided for one year. So I'm using the same and it's pretty much free and you can try out all the Google Cloud Platform services here. Okay, so as a step number one, uh, we need to create a cluster, but before that, uh, just go over here in this section, uh, we need to create some project over here. By default, if you are trying to log in for the first time, then you'll see this option, my first project. And uh, uh, for this session, I have created this uh, project, Jhook Spring Boot Demo, if you can see over here. And I have selected that project. So on top, you can see this is the project I have selected. All right. So next thing we need to do is we, do, we need to uh, tell Google Cloud Platform to create a cluster for Kubernetes. And for that, head over to this left navigation menu uh, and go down into the compute section and there is a Kubernetes engine and then create on cluster, click on cluster. Uh, you can pin this option also because if you're going to use this frequently, then you can pin this option and this option will be available for you here on the top. Okay, so I'll go to the cluster. And here you can see this is the first page which you see. If you haven't created the cluster before, then this is the first page you are going to get. And here you need to click on the create cluster. Okay, so this is the cluster basic detail which you need to fill in. And on the left hand side in the guide, you can also follow the same step. So here we have seen this cluster option and this is the details which we need to fill in over here. So uh, we need to name the cluster name. So what we can say is jhook demo session. Okay, and if you uh, don't want to modify any of this detail, it's absolutely okay. You can keep it as a default. Uh, we are uh, keeping the zone US, that's okay. And uh, the static version we are going to use is 1.14 for Google Kubernetes engine. So then just click on create. And since uh, this is the first time we are uh, creating a Kubernetes cluster, or if you are going to create for the first time, then it will take some time. It might take a couple of minutes, five minutes, uh, because it's in the back end, it's creating the complete Kubernetes cluster. So I'll back when this uh, Kubernetes cluster is ready. As you can see, our Kubernetes cluster is ready, and we can see this green option over here. Uh, moving to the step number second, uh, we need to set up the dashboard or install the dashboard and for that we need to use this command cube cuttle apply and then we need to apply this YML. So this is a YML for uh, Kubernetes dashboard that we need to use. But uh, how to run this command? So for that uh, what you need to do is you need to access the uh, Kubernetes cluster console and for that just here you need to click on connect. And uh, uh, you can use this option run in Cloud Shell. So it will open a terminal window for you, uh, which will connect you to the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, 
okay so now as you can see uh, we are now accessing the uh, google cloud or kubernetes cluster console and by default it uh, uh, provides you with one command uh, you can see over here google cloud container cluster get credentials so that command you need to run it first otherwise you won't be able to run those commands the kubernetes or kubectl commands so i'll hit enter okay so now we have fetched the credential the next thing which we need to do is we need to apply the dashboard yml so in the step number second copy that command and uh, paste it over here and hit enter All right, so now we have uh, successfully uh, installed or conf uh, applied the Kubernetes dashboard YML. Let's move to the next step. Moving to the step number third, we need to create an account, uh, which we call it a service account. And for that, we need to again uh, write some YML configuration. But uh, as you can see in this guide, in the step number third, I have pretty much written this uh, YML configuration. And you can run this YML configuration as a command. So let's see what we have written into that YML. So we are trying to create a service account over here. So we need to define it as a kind. And name of the user is admin user and the namespace which we are going to use over here is kubernetes dashboard so copy this command and uh, paste it over here and hit enter okay so here you can see the message service account admin user has been created so that means our user has been created into the kubernetes cluster let's move to the step number four and in the step number four, we need to create the cluster role binding with the user. What that means is like we have created the user here in the step number third. Now we need to create the roles in the step number four. But along with this role, we need to bind that role with the user. So that's step number four. So I'll explain this command a bit over here. So what kind of uh, uh, configuration which we are trying to apply is cluster role binding. And the name is of the user is admin user. As you can see in the previous step, we have used the same name, user. Okay, the next thing is uh, what kind of a role it is. So this is a cluster role. Okay, and what is the name? So the name of the role is cluster admin. And the third thing, uh, like for which user you are trying to create this role. So that is service account. And what's the name of that user? So that is admin user. You can see over here and again we need to define the namespace so namespace should be common uh, for user as well as the role if you are trying to bind that user with that role so here the namespace is kubernetes dashboard and that should match with your previous user creation okay so that's been said let's copy this command uh, I'll clear this console. Uh, it's been uh, getting a little messy over here. Okay, so now I'll paste this command over here and hit enter. Okay, so here you can see this message cluster role binding RBAC authorization KATIO uh, admin user has been created. So now we have created the user as well as we have created the role binding. Let's move to the step number five. In the step number five, we are going to start the Kubernetes API server. And for that, the command is kubectl proxy. So we need to run this command into our Google Cloud console. And let this terminal be open here. And this is our step number five. Uh, moving to the step number six, we need to generate the token to access the dashboard. And uh, for that, the command is this kubectl uh, and for a namespace. And this is the Kubernetes dashboard. And if you remember, we have used the same namespace which we have used for creating uh, user and the role binding. 
so that's the namespace and then describe and secrets are the keywords and then I have just shortened this command and this same command you can find it on uh, Kubernetes IO documentation also okay so copy this command but uh, don't kill this process because we are running the Kubernetes API uh, server in the background. So what I would suggest is just open a one more terminal and uh, run the same command over here. Okay, so now it will generate you a token which we are going to use to access the Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, all right, so that is our step number six. Moving to the step number seven, how to access the dashboard. So now we have started the Kubernetes API server. We have created the user role binding and even created the token. So what I would suggest it, uh, as I suggested in the previous step also, just copy this token somewhere in your notepad, which we are going to use the, to access the uh, dashboard. Okay, so how to access the dashboard. So here in the Google Cloud Console, you will see this option web preview. So just click on it and click on the preview on port 8080. So just click on it. Okay, don't worry, it will give you an error, but we need to modify this URL. But for before that, we need to copy that URL. Uh, just copy this URL and uh, I'll use this notepad over here. And uh, this is the token which we have uh, previously generated, so I copied it. And I'll paste this URL over here. Jump back to our step number seven in the guide and uh, we, what we need to do is we need to remove this uh, auth user from URL first of all and we need to change the port also. So port should be at 001 and uh, after what should be the final URL so we need to copy this long URL and this URL you can find in the Kubernetes documentation. So it's pretty much same URL. The only thing is this host has been changed over here. That's it. I'll remove this forward slash. Okay, so this is our going to be our final URL for accessing the Kubernetes dashboard. So copy this URL and uh, jump back to the browser again. And I'll just control A and paste here. Okay, great. So here we, you can see the Kubernetes dashboard, which you can access uh, uh, from outside world. And uh, this is how you can create the dashboard and access it. Okay, let's move uh, to the next step. Moving to the next step, uh, use the token, uh, which is step number eight. We need to use the token from uh, step number six. Okay, so I told you to copy that token. So I'll jump back to my notepad. Okay, so this is my token and which I'm going to use to access this uh, you, uh, Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, so I copied the token and be careful with the spaces because it might cause some issue if you put extra spaces. So I copied this token and I selected the option token over here and here I am going to paste the token and click on sign in. All right, so as you can see, I'll just uh, maximize this screen. So this is our Kubernetes dashboard, which you can see over here. And this is our uh, Kubernetes dashboard for Kubernetes cluster running on a Google Cloud platform. And here you can see all the things, jobs, deployment, and even replica set, replication controller, services. So all are the thing you can be, it can be viewed over here. Okay, so to make this session more interesting, let's apply one small Spring Boot application on Google Cloud uh, uh, Kubernetes engine. So let's, I'll, I'll minimize the screen a bit and I'll put the console on this side so that you can see both. And I'll enable the option or I'll click on the option deployment over here. So here you can see there is no deployment, uh, there is no application which is being deployed in the Google Cloud platform or Kubernetes engine. So I'm going to deploy one uh, Spring Boot application 
uh, which is very basic application and for that uh, I'm going to run this command so I'll explain the command a bit so this is the coop CTL create deployment and uh, after that you need to mention the application name which is jhook spring boot and then you need to specify the image and that image i have already uploaded to google cloud registry that is gcr.io and you need to hit enter so as you can see the deployment uh, apps jhook spring boot has been created okay and as you can see on the right hand side uh, you get the notification in your dashboard that the deployment has been created and one more thing uh, there are services uh, since we have only created a deployment we haven't created any services so there will not be any services here this is the default service which is like uh, running behind the scene for kubernetes but uh, there is no service which has been created for our spring boot application so here uh, there was no deployment for j spring boot so we created that deployment next thing which we are going to do which we are going to do is we are going to create the service so uh, we need to run the again kubectl command for creating the service and this is the command which we are going to use for creating the service so what we are going to tell the kubernetes is expose the deployment then the application name and how you are going to expose on a load balancer and the port which is 80 or eight, and that targeted port is 8080 so just hit uh, I'll just enable the service oh, we have already clicked on it so I'll just hit enter in the console so as you can see the service has been exposed and immediately on the right hand side you can see the notification like the service is getting created it's still not green but uh, it will be soon ready okay so this is what uh, I had planned in this session for kubernetes dashboard on the Google Cloud platform and there are so many options which are available in the dashboard of kubernetes which you can explore by yourself but these are very primarily things which i showed you and which you can explore by reading the documentation uh, from kubernetes.io and uh, yep so i hope you like today's session on how to set up kubernetes dashboard on a google cloud platform if you face any issues or any error then please put down into the comment section and if you want to try out the same kubernetes dashboard and if you want everything on your local system then please refer to my previous tutorial on how to set up the kubernetes cluster on a local as well as uh, google cloud platform which can help you to set up uh, uh, the Google Kubernetes, sorry, the Kubernetes cluster on your local development machine as well. So, yeah, please subscribe to my channel and I would like to hear back from you for uh, any more questions or queries. And yeah, please put down into the comment section. Thank you. Goodbye.